Welcome to County Magazine, a chance to find out what's new across Fairfax County. I'm Brian Ashby. On this edition, the Community Center in Lee District opens to an eager community. A few details on the county's adopted 2023 budget and a visit to the Mount Vernon District Environment Expo. Plus, the Fairfax County Poet Laureate brings poetry to the Juvenile Detention Center. Becoming the Fairfax County Poet Laureate is one of the highest honors for a professional poet in Northern Virginia. The two-year term awards the honoree for professional achievement and charges him or her with bringing poetry to the daily lives of residents through public service. Nicole Tong did just that, introducing some of our most vulnerable residents to the hope and freedom found in self-expression. They ripped them out my life. His smile was really bright. He picked me up from school. He would always say, son, make something about your life. Dad, I'm going to college. I'm going to play football and live what we dream. We had poetry um, come to the JDC. And for kids that generally are a little bit ho-hum about academics, especially touchy-feely stuff like poetry, um, it was a bit of a stretch. And we were sort of more optimistic and hopeful than we were confident that this was going to work. Fairfax County and Arts Fairfax in particular put out a call for poets who are interested in serving in this way. And as part of the application process, we had to propose a project uh, that would be community-facing that we could do to make an impact um, on the community. And so this was my idea, you know, a few years ago. The students have the new prompt in their journal, so students, you can open that up. We're gonna ask Jose to read the poem that the prompt is about after Mariah has her question. It seemed like a perfect fit from the beginning that the students already had a great support system and we were able to bring a couple of extra people in, some really great poets in Nicole, some GMU MFA students who are poets themselves, um, to really interact with the kids and get them writing. Our students were very open-minded when it came to experiencing uh, this, this new genre to them. And uh, when I say new, many of them maybe had some inhibitions. They weren't sure if they'd like it or not. It was surprising to me as well as the teachers because I was like, I'm not going to like it. Uh, you know, it's not going to be for me. And then now everybody's like, you know, you're the star of the, the show. Like, it's just, it's surprising, but I like it. You're not dying on me. Don't even think about it. The Poet Laureate is an ambassador for poetry. And so poetry is something that has uh, fallen out of favors in many communities. It is distant from most people's lives. And so part of the job of a Poet Laureate is to reintroduce communities to poetry and the power of poetry. These adults came in and they just shared their craft, they shared their art, um, and they were able to sort of inspire the students to kind of get to a place I've never seen them go. Yeah, this is, this is my, my full-time job at this point is like making books, uh, giving lectures, giving performances. We're not teaching the poetry and poets of old, we're teaching contemporary, living people. For a long time, I never imagined leaving Chicago. And uh, when I started writing poetry, that's when I started meeting people from all over the place and connecting with them. We got to speak and communicate on a Zoom with poets who they had read over the course of the past few months. And so they had these connections that they were ready to share with their poets and really watch this art become alive. It was really fun. like. They, you know, they even got us to meet um, Jose Alvarado. I kind of liked his books when I seen it. I was like, wait, that's him. Like, you know, that's the, uh, the author. And then it was just, it was amazing. And I want you to know that, you know, I'm gonna be rooting for you. Like I said, um, you know, your teachers have my contact information. So if you want to send me uh, an email, if you want to write to me, I'll write back. Students begin to see oh, poetry doesn't have to rhyme. I thought that poetry had all these rules, and this group in particular said we thought po poetry was all rainbows and unicorns, and then we read a poem by Clint Smith or Jose Olivares, and we understand that what is represented on the pages looks a lot like a life that we've lived. They were sort of having conversations with grown-ups, they were stretching themselves, they were using their communication skills, 
And I think ultimately they learned that poetry could actually be a coping skill for them. The staff members that were working in there were really helpful towards us because I've always been afraid of like express my feelings because I'm scared somebody might judge me and they didn't do that. It's just being able to elevate their voices. They have a lot to say and um, we're just, we're grateful to listen. It is a program very much about literacy and ownership and agency. So I hope that they feel all three of those things and feel a, a confidence in the power of those three things to play a role in their lives. Recently, Mount Vernon District Supervisor Dan Stork headlined the fourth annual Environment Expo at historic Fort Hunt Park. The event connected residents with all things environmental, including habitat and animals, recycling, alternate energy, and responsible stewardship. We're here because this is a great way to connect people in the natural world, as well as people in, in the many organizations that are trying to make a difference in the natural world. This fourth environmental expo in general provides lots of opportunities for people to connect where they are. We'll take folks where they are, help them connect to lots of other things. So whether it's you're interested in cooking, we have solar cooking, whether you're interested in animals, we have reptiles and owls and, and birds and turtles, etc. Or you're interested in how to recycle better, to refuse, reduce, uh, reuse and recycle the four R's, which are a central part of what folks learn. Or you just want to know more about uh, Dyke Marsh or, or Mason Neck uh, or the Aquacon Regional Park. There are just lots of different ways, or Fort Hunt Park in general, this historic Fort Hunt Park. The biggest takeaway is to be open and, and curious and learn. So we're looking for one more thing that maybe you haven't done before that you'll do as a result of having been here. So. A large percentage of the park exists within Fairfax County. Supervisor Stork has a personal kind of passion for history and the stories of what make our nation great. And so I think there's a, a, a nexus there where we join together. And through the last four years, really, we've connected on a variety of issues, this being a really important one of community support. The Fairfax County Board of Supervisors approved the fiscal year 2023 budget. And there's some good news in it for residents. To address the rising cost of homes, the board approved a three cent real estate tax rate reduction from $1.14 to $1.11 per $100 of assessed value. The value of vehicles, both new and used, has risen dramatically. While the board kept the personal property tax rate at $4.57 per $100 of assessed value, the board approved a 15% reduction in the assessment ratio so that vehicles will be assessed at 85% of their fair market value rather than the usual 100%. This is the first time the board has ever changed the assessment ratio. As summer settles in, we turn our minds to vacation, getting outdoors, and soaking up the warm weather. But it's not all fun and games. West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne contagion that can cause illness, sometimes serious. The Fairfax County Department of Health and Channel 16 partnered to develop a fun message on how to keep yourself and your family safe. Here's MC Bug Z with a West Nile story. Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> MC Bug Z. Who's heard of West Nile virus? You may not realize it, but it's inside of mosquitoes and they can spread it to people. So cover up, rock repellent, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. No vaccine to protect, no medication to treat it. That means attention to prevention is the challenge. So meet it. Empty scrub, turn over cover, tip and toss out containers. Clean up the yard once a week and you'll live your best life later. Long, loose, like colored clothes, so no skin's exposed to biting mosquitoes. Attempting undercover probes. Use repellents to protect yourself and those that you love from the potential health threats of being bitten by a bug. Who's heard of West Nile virus? You may not realize it, but it's inside of mosquitoes and they can spread it to people. So Cover up, rock repellent, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. Yo, who's heard of West Nile virus? You may not realize it, but it's inside the mosquitoes and they can spread it to people. So cover up, rock repellent, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. 
West Nile is a threat to public health in the summertime. Been here for 20 years. Shout out to Queens 99. Rapid spread from east to west. Now it's throughout the continental U.S. Culex, mosquito vector with the bird preference. In nature, West Nile cycles between mosquitoes and birds. When those mosquitoes feed on people, infections occur. Steady sipping dust till dawn because they're nighttime biters. Attack at twilight like micro vampires. Who's heard of West Nile virus? You may not realize it, but it's inside of mosquitoes and they can spread it to people. So cover up, rock repelling, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. Who's heard of West Nile virus? You may not realize it, but it's inside of mosquitoes and they can spread it to people. So cover up, rock repelling, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. Now luckily most folks infected will never feel sick But some will suffer from fever, rash, aches, and weakness The most recover completely, the fatigue can persist For weeks or months you could be living lethargic and listless Unfortunately any age can get severe illness But people older than 60 and the sick have the highest risk Of neuroinvasive cases with lifelong effects Encephalitis, meningitis from a virus that wrecks Protect from West Nile virus Here's hoping you realize that it's inside of mosquitoes And they can spread it to people so cover up, rock repellent, get rid of standing water. Mosquito bites can be more than just a bother. You gotta protect yourself. Represent and vector control. Vector control. A mosquito that never bites will never have the chance to change your life. Cover up and use EPA approved repellents when mosquitoes are active. Bug Z and I'm out. In May 2020, Fairfax County purchased the Mount Vernon Athletic Club with the aim of establishing a community center that offered everything from recreation to jobs programs. Two years later, the 50,000 square foot center has opened to much community excitement. Here's more. I've got to say, I've been in office now for two and a half years, but today I feel I've been waiting for this day since I got here. This community center is a physical embodiment, really a monument to the county's values. Yes. Three, two, one. We are celebrating the ribbon cutting and grand opening of the community center that is co-located with our WISH Center, which is a workforce innovation hub for workforce development. The Workforce Hub is definitely uh, a cutting edge 21st century um, opportunity resource for the community to engage in and take advantage of classes, internships, apprenticeships to ensure that they have the skills to obtain gainful employment um, and to, to also give them the, the skills to be more competitive in the workforce. We do have a music studio. We will have a computer clubhouse here. Uh, for kids to have uh, access to, to digital resources and to in improve their ability for uh, literacy with our digital devices. Um, we'll also have sports and recreation. Uh, we'll also have space and programming for, for families as well. When I think about what this community center represents and the possibilities that it will be unlocking for our region, it is not really possible to start that conversation without beginning with Chairman Jeff McKay. The Chairman of the Board of Supervisors gets an opportunity to do a lot of ribbon cuttings. None has been more important to this Chairman than this one today. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know I grew up here. This is my community. I grew up in Woodlawn. We thought our communities were just like all the other communities in the county until we noticed that those opportunities were far lacking compared to other parts of Fairfax County. This center was built by the community. And looking around, you quickly realize that it truly sits at the center of it. It literally couldn't fit the definition of a community center more perfectly. That's all for this edition of County Magazine. Thanks for joining me. Remember, there are countless ways to get involved in your community and make Fairfax County an even better place to live, work, play, and learn. I'm Brian Ashby, and we'll see you next time on County Magazine.